Hello, welcome again, Sister Juma, to lesson number 13. So this is our second last lesson. So we have uh, said we are on breaking in chemical, or we are dealing with the energy changes in chemical processes and physical processes. So today we discuss the energy changes in physical processes, and uh, we are going to consider the example of the heating curve of ice. That will give us a good example of um, the energy change in physical processes. Now, this is the curve that will be obtained if you are to heat ice until it melts all the way uh, until you go to a boiling point when it changes to water. Then when you continue heating water, the water will evaporate. So from point A to point B, the state of the ice here, it is in solid. So with the time, so this side you have time, time in minutes. So as you continue heating the ice, so the temperature starts to rise steadily. When the temperature reaches zero degrees Celsius, it remains constant. So at this particular point, when you heat from the kinetic theory of the matter, the particles absorb the heat energy and they increase their vibration. So heat energy is absorbed, the particles absorb heat energy, then they continue, uh, I mean they, they increase their vibration. Then at region BC, at this particular point, the temperature remains constant. So at this point the temperature remains constant. And the reason why the temperature remains constant, despite the fact that heating is continuing, it is because the heat energy supplied at this particular point is absorbed. It weakens the forces of attraction between the solid particles. And when the forces have been weakened enough, the, the, the particles shift their position. From the kinetic theory of matter, in solid state, the particles are closely packed together. That is the particles in solid state, they are closely packed together. So as you continue to heat, what happens is that the, the distance, the interparticle distance increases. So that increase in distance is what results to melting. So in liquid state, the particles are a bit far apart. Now this process here, let me put it this way because we need the other reverse process. So this is where we have melting process. So at that particular point, the particles, the, the distance between the particles increase. So at this point, this is what we call melting. So at this particular point, this melting, as I've said, heat energy is absorbed to weaken the forces of attraction. In solid state here, the force of attraction is very strong. Force of attraction, very strong, it is very strong. But here, it is weak, force of attraction is weak, it has been weakened by the heat energy that was absorbed. So at this particular point, so there is absorption of heat energy. So at this point, we can say the reaction at this particular point is endothermic. As we said, this heat energy uh, ap ap uh, applied at this particular point does not result into rising temperature. So it is hidden kind of, because it is not reflected by the thermometer, the temperature remains constant, yet heat is being supplied. So the, 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 the heat energy that is um, involved here, it has a specific name. This heat energy at this particular point we call it latent heat of fusion. So fusion, the fuse is that solid structure. So when that solid structure is broken, so the heat involved there, it is the heat of fusion because it is not indicated on the thermometer. That's why the word latent comes in, which um, connotes the aspect of uh, being heated, so heat of fusion. So when you heat one mode, when you heat 
one mole, then you are going one mole of ice, let's say for example, so we had 18 grams of water, that would be one mole of water. So in that case, we have what we call molar heat of fusion. Molar heat of fusion. So therefore, by definition, then we can say that the amount of heat energy required to convert one mole of a solid substance to liquid, that is what we call the molar heat of fusion. So this would be the enthalpy change that is required. So the enthalpy change required to change one mole of a solid to, to liquid. So the heat change that occurs at that particular point, that is what we call the latent heat of fusion, and it occurs at a constant temperature that is what uh, have the melting point. As you continue heating, now when all the, the forces have been weakened, the particles have moved apart from each other, the distance has increased. Now the solid completely changes to liquid, it melts. Now at this region, CB, the state at which the substance is existing, it is existing as liquid. As heating continues, the liquid molecules absorb the kinetic energy. They, they, they absorb the heat energy. Their kinetic energy increases. So they absorb the heat energy, so they absorb the heat energy. The kinetic energy increases. So as the kinetic energy increases, their vibration increases, they become more vibrant. And what is happening all this while, as they gain more kinetic energy, the force of attraction starts to weaken. So when they have absorbed enough energy to weaken the force of attraction, then the liquid changes from now uh, liquid to gas. This is where the point where we have vapor, or the liquid may change to vapor, and that is what we call vaporization or evaporation, vaporization. And here again, the reaction is endothermic, this particular point, same thing happens as here. The heat energy supplied at this particular point is used to weaken the forces of attraction. Going back to a kinetic uh, model, so in gases, the particles are much apart, are very far away from each other. The distance is much greater. So, that energy that is required to move the particles apart is absorbed and that is why here we don't have the change in temperature. The temperature remains constant because the heat energy supplied here is used to weaken the forces of attraction, moving the particles uh, further apart. The heat involved here, the heat change here, we call it the heat of Vaporization. Heat of vaporization. The Latin heat of vaporization, heat of vaporization. Now, when one mole of substance again is used, then we can also have molar, molar heat of vaporization. So we can also define, therefore, molar heat of vaporization. As the enthalpy change that occurs when uh, one mole of a liquid or the heat change required to convert one mole of a liquid, one more of a liquid to vapor. So the enthalpy change required to enthalpy change is only required to to change or to convert one more of liquid to vapor. So that would be the enthalpy
therapy of vaporization. Now, the reverse process, the reverse process, when now cooling starts, when you cool, the entropy or the energy that was absorbed to weaken the force of attraction is liberated. So the reverse process, so when you start to move from C, E to D, this reaction is exothermic. Reason, heat energy is liberated. As the molecules condense, they start to move. So uh, this was the forward. So this is where we have the polarization. So the reverse process is condensation. It occurs at the same temperature as vaporization. Condensation occurs at the same temperature as vaporization. And in this process, heat is heat is liberated. Here heat absorbed. Now explain that I said the heat is absorbed to weaken the force of attraction. But the reverse process, when the particles come together, new bonds are formed. Force of attraction increases, bonds are formed, heat energy is liberated. So the reverse process is that. And the heat change here also, the reverse process is called the entropy of vaporization because it is equivalent to the heat energy that was absorbed. The difference will be the sign. Because here it was absorbed, the reaction was endothermic, the sign is plus, the reverse, same value, but the sign will be negative because the reverse process, heat energy is liberated, so the reverse process is endothermic, endothermic is represented by negative value. We come to here, when the liquid changes to solid, so when we cool vapor, it condenses to form liquid water. When you continue cooling the water, so the reverse process, you are cooling forward, you are heating. So when we reverse the process, now the liquid reach a point temperature at which now the liquid starts to change to solid. And that process is what we call freezing. We call that process freezing. And the entropy change will be the same, the heat, of land, uh, heat of fusion. Now, why is this heat? The reverse also having uh, calling it the heat of fusion because in this case the entropy change or the heat energy that was used was absorbed to break or to weaken the, the forces of attraction here. It is the same amount of energy that is going to be liberated. The only difference is the process is going to be exothermic. So the reverse process is exothermic, heat energy liberated, so you have heat liberated given out. So being exothermic, exothermic will be represented by the negative value. Otherwise the forward was endothermic, melting to endothermic, the process, the heat change there in positive value. The reverse, same amount of heat energy, but reverse process of the entropy change or the heat change that is given there is a is given out so the sign is negative. And just to point out as I conclude this lesson, to point out this, mark the distance BC and DE. You will find that always DE is larger than BC. Or put in other words, the entropy of the heat change of vaporization is always is always greater than the entropy change of fusion and the reason is better explained using this model here. Now if you look at the gas, the particles in gaseous state the particles, the distance between the particles is much larger. The particles are further apart compared to a liquid state. In liquid state, the particles are slightly apart from each other. So the work done here to change the solid to liquid, it means moving these particles apart from each other. 
a little bit far away from each other. So you are moving them shorter distance. So the amount of energy required to move them to shorter distance here is not the same as the amount of energy that will require to move the particles here to larger distances. That is the reason why this entropy of vaporization is always greater than that of fusion. The reason is because in vaporization, particles are moved to longer distances than in changing them from solid to liquid. So the reason is because more energy is used to move particles to larger distances than from liquid to gas as compared to moving particles apart, particles apart in uh, part from solid to liquid. So that gives uh, or explains the reason why the particles, the particles in uh, moving the distances between the, the particles uh, from solid to liquid, the, you are moving them to a shorter distance. But moving the particles from uh, liquid to gas, we are moving the particles to larger distance. For that reason, more energy is required to move the particles to larger distance than to move the particles to shorter distances. And that is why the enthalpy of vaporization is always greater or larger than the enthalpy of uh, fusion. And that will mark the end of our lesson number 13. Thank you for watching.